Uh, Lillian, she contacts uh, a Mead wife, her name Jill Hutch Hutchins, and it seems that uh, she does work in a Southampton hospital, and everyone um, likes her and everyone is recommending her now. So you made an appointment with a private midwife yeah. to see the baby? She's contacted and... and she's going to come down straight away? She contacted and she said, yes, I will go to see your baby. All of this is between conversations with Lillian. Right. And when's she going to come and see the baby? As soon as possible. What do you mean on that a day? On that, on hour? that day, that hour, exactly. As soon as possible. So, yes. All right. uh, she works at the Princess Anne Hospital. She's a she private was, midwife. But she also does private midwifery services outside of the so NHS. She was unable to come, but first of all she promised she would yeah. come. So yes. she said she would come, yes. and then yeah. she didn't. Yes. Okay, so what happens next? As she didn't, and she said that she cannot uh, come to see the baby because the hospital is in red alert. Yeah. The hospital was having problems and concerns about us and was not allowing her to come and see us. Is that the red said? alert was regarding us. I see. So that's what she said to you. <laughs> what she said to Lillian was that there is concerns regarding the father of the baby, which ones she could not say, but because of that she was not allowed to come around and see the baby. I understand. What happens now? Is social service, Paula Thomas and Colin. So who are these people? Social services. And their names are? Paula Thomas. And Paula Thomas. Paula, sorry. Can you speak up a little bit, Leon? Oh, Paula, Paula Thomas okay. is a social worker. And Colin, I don't know his surname. Okay. And uh, police people. You definitely now know that something is terribly wrong. Yeah. And the reason why the police officers are there is not just for the safety yeah. of you and the baby, because of something else. Which yes. You mentioned Leon. This... Officer Paula Thomas, she turns up and she says that she has a, a contract of expectations. She shows us the, the paper and you are afraid of the word contract. You don't know what is on the contract and you don't really want to. You don't want to sign anything. You are afraid what's, so what, you, what is on the contract. This person offered a contract to you. Yes, they handle... And she wants you to sign it? Yes, they show to us, like, there is a contract in here and um, we need to do this. And so they, it seems like to me they're asking your permission to do what they want to do with you. They're trying to force you a contract yes. on you without yes. any legal, legal help or lawful help. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, Did you sorry. Sign the contract? No, we didn't sign the contract. Okay, so what happens now? So, Paula Thomas, she says that there is um, concerns regarding the baby health and that the baby needs to go to the hospital. Okay. Uh, yes, what they said is, um, are you coming with us to the hospital? If you do not want to come, there is a policeman in here and uh, your baby is going to the hospital with you or without you. So on this, you can't really choose. And so you went to the hospital. And we went to the hospital. Is there anything that... Is there anything that we need to know between that point and getting to the hospital? Uh, yeah, on, and on the car with uh, Colin and Paula Thomas, um, I, can, I recall, for example, that they ask, what's my baby's name? And I said, we do not know, we haven't decided. And Colin said, you had nine months. I felt that <laughs> that's not right. That's not so right. he's already starting to accuse you. Yeah. Uh, when we arrived to the hospital, we have um, a private midwife waiting for us, a friend that she is available to be there. At the hospital? At the hospital. Okay. Uh, as, uh, as our private midwife to see the baby and, uh, and to be there for us, mainly. And her name is um, Catherine. Catherine Amos.
Yeah. Catherine Weymouth. She checked over our baby and she has a report. She's written a report and a statement for us as well, which is available. I say I say to her that the baby on Thursday, on the 4th of February, has become slightly yellow. Uh, so it's called jaundice. And Leonardo check on internet, on ANHS uh, website, what was saying about um, jaundice. Yes. I go on the internet. This is a few days. This is a on few Thursday. days before. Finish off what you were saying. You went on the internet. On, yes, on the 4th of February, he became yellow. He had a bit of yellow on him, and I knew that that's jaundice. So I went on a NHS website and did some searching on it and looked it up. I looked it up and found out a lot of babies, this kind of a normal thing happens after three days, three or four days, which is the same exact period that he became yellow. So I read it, it reassured us, yeah, it said, you know, it's, it's normal, you're breastfeeding, and it will pass. So th that reassured us. And I wrote it in our diary, in Yolanda's diary, no you, you noted it. diary as well? Yes. Yeah. So I called my mum and I said, the baby is a bit yellow, what is this about? And she said, that's fine, that will go away. Just keep a record, just keep an eye on it. But there's not, nothing uh, urgent. Most of the babies sometimes they get yellow. And uh, Leonardo called Lillian as well, and we talk about the same, and she said, that's fine, that's normal. Uh, most of the babies, sometimes they get yellow. And so then, in a, on Friday, we're in the hospital, the nurse, uh, Catherine, she said exactly the same. The midwife, the private midwife, Catherine. John, this is something that is normal on the newborn babies will not be normal if it would come up on exactly when you're born, but because it's three or four days after, it's normal. So what's the other fact? So what's they the other prominent thing that's happening? So they say that the jaundice level is 377 and the normal value is 350. And uh, because of that, uh, the baby needs uh, immediate uh, treatment and the baby is going to be uh, on uh, phototherapy. Uh, they, they, uh, they, uh, two policemen, they turn up uh, in the hospital and um, they wanted to speak with us and they said that uh, the baby was uh, for 72 hours uh, protection order and... So the baby is now under protection order? Yes. Mm. Okay. And that if we... And that happened what time? That happened around 5 o'clock a.m at 6th of February, Saturday. Okay. And what's the reason? I do not know. They did not give you a reason? No. And do they say it is because of the father? What do they say? No, they didn't say that. What did they say is that if you try to take the baby from here, you both, you're going to be arrested. And until now, until this point, uh, we have not been given any papers. Nothing that... Uh, says what are the concerns okay. and so with no, who? No paperwork and you are blind? Completely, yes. Okay. So completely. what happens now? Uh, when my partner requests the paperwork, um, he's, he, he's been told that he's aggressive. So what happened is, first of all, um, they so wanted to give uh, a vitamin K injection and formula to our baby. Uh -huh. um, we didn't want him to have the vitamin K injection. And he was breastfeeding, doing very well breastfeeding. So we didn't want him to have formula. So it is Sarah, Dr. Sarah Davison, that she says to me that uh, your milk is not good enough. OK, so your, your milk is not enough, and she's asking you to produce enough milk. And she says to me that I give you some options. I give you three formula options and I say to her that I don't know why she's saying that my milk is not enough and I ask her based on what she says that.
She says that she knows that the milk is not enough. I say to her that uh, I do not consent my baby to have formula and that is an assault if she wants to do that. I also, I say this to her too, previously. I said this to her. And when uh, my partner says that to Sarah Davison, so then she says, you are aggressive and I'm going to call security and you're going to get out of the hospital. And now I'm fighting for my baby to not have formula. Uh, uh, the shift of this doctor finish, uh, sorry, uh, she says to me, you are not going to give formula if you can actually pump then 30 mils. Prove that you can do 30 mils and then so you're... Did you, did you produce 30 mils of milk? I did produce 30 mils of milk. Okay, so... My baby was crying and she was saying that my baby was crying because the milk was not so enough. You, you produced 30... And I had, I had to stop breastfeeding to hold on the machine and to be able to pump the, 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 the milk. Can I, can I... What they were trying to do is, you have to produce 30 mils of milk. And it seems most of the women, they cannot do it in one day. Right. So this Dr. Davis Johnson, she requested me to have 30 mils. And having 30 mils pump, she guaranteed that I could breastfeed. After I had that 30 mils pump, I show it to her and I'm expecting not to breastfeed and she says you are not allowed to give that milk because your partner said that you don't, he does not want you to have pumped milk. This does make no sense and I said to her it doesn't matter even because my partner is now outside of the hospital. So now I'm going to breastfeed and she says no you are not. You have, um, you, you, you have now to pump uh, milk, 30 mils every hour. So now volume is so important that I have to guarantee that I can do that. And my understanding is that one woman, is very difficult for one woman to pump 30 mils in even in one day. And I was able to do it. And the second time that I did it, I did it 50 mil. Now, Sarah Davison is extremely upset that I was able to do it, and now she says, I had enough, I'm not shouting more, just breastfeed. Her, her, her shift has finished, and Dr. Sharma, the, the same person that saw my baby for the first time, is now in charge for my baby. And I have a meeting with him, requested by him, saying that now my milk is enough on, uh, uh, on the day after. Sally Denton, Sally Denton, um, she wants to speak with us and she's smiling and she informs us that in about 10 minutes you are going to be in court. We are completely desperate. First, because the way she's speaking to us, smiling, we're expecting good news. And surprisingly, she's saying the worst thing that I could hear, that well, I'm going to be in court and I don't have anyone to defend me. I don't know even why I'm going to be in court because I don't have no papers whatsoever. So we go to the room to try to understand what's going on and we receive a private phone call from solicitors that I don't know who are they, saying that we are in court and if you want, we can take this, we can help you. And under the rest, I say, oh yes, please, please do it, please help me. So now it seems I am in court, having people that I don't know who are they defending me. And I don't know what is this about. I don't know what are defending me. I don't know what they accusing me. I don't know anything. So um, from these people that they are in court, they say that... Um, uh, because the judge wants to see you guys, because wants to understand what's going on, they want the court now to be for tomorrow at 2 p.m. And, and if we, we agreed that the 72 hours, they would be prolonged.
the police order was extended for the, another period of time. And they wanted me to yeah. agree that I was not going to take the baby tomorrow for the court to happen at 2 p.m. I said, yes, fine, I will do it. Um, after this phone call, we don't know what really happened. We don't understand how there is a court situation that we have not been called, that we haven't received papers, that we don't know even where the court was. We don't know nothing. And on that evening, there was a meeting uh, with me, Mark, and Leonard, Leonardo, and Paula Thomas, and Annette Simpson. And uh, they came at us saying, is this true that this person is your solicitor and this person is your solicitor? And we said, we don't know who are they. I have not asked them to be my solicitors because I didn't have no opportunity to get them. It's true that I got a phone call and I have people saying that they were going to help me, but I don't know who are they. And we request them to Paula Thomas, the papers. Have you been to court? So which ones are the papers from court? And when we ask them for the papers, they literally, they stand up and I can say that they run away. They run away from the room. I don't understand. Is this the point where I was there? Yes. 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 All right. So what happened is that I just simply asked them a question. I, used, uh, I asked them, there's no record of them having any solicitors. They've never hired a solicitor. And there is no court case. There's never been a single piece of paper. Before I finished the sentence, they left the court, uh, the room. The nurse that was there said, I'm only here to represent the interest and only the interest of the hospital. The social walked. The social worker walked out, proving to me that they did not have a single piece of evidence for anything, and they were just simply fishing for evidence. They were trying to get you a solicitor by saying that is your solicitor by mentioning names. So when it was when they were confronted with a single question, is where's the paperwork? What court? They just simply ran off. That's yeah. that's when I was there. Yeah. Okay. And that's when we realised they wasn't there wasn't a single piece of evidence that they had of any wrongdoings, but what they were doing is trying to look for evidence look for reasons why they can keep the baby in as long as they can. They were making up the charges as they go along, but not charging you with anything. That's making an accusation and hoping, hopefully, you'll start to mitigate into that accusation and start defending yourself. That, that never happened because you have nothing to defend uh, yourself from. And that's what I witnessed. Yeah. That was on a Monday, 8th of February. And on the day after, we were expecting them to be in court again at 2 p.m. without knowing where that court would be. On the, that day in the morning, when I was going to breastfeed my baby, I was surprised by two policemen. And they said, do not try to take your baby from here, otherwise you're going to be arrested. And I asked them, where is the court going to be? And they said, in Southampton. I asked them for an address. And I asked them for papers with everything written, where the court was going to be and what time for me to be there. But they are saying Southampton. And other people said Portsmouth, as has happened, it seems, last time. And I cannot guarantee because I've never seen anything. So even if I want to be in court, I, I do not know where to be. I don't know if in see London, in Southampton, or in Portsmouth. After that, uh, I waited for anything coming up from the court. I remember the afternoon a solicitor came to see you, but didn't show you any uh, ID, or didn't show you who he was, or give any information as to who he's from, but he wanted to, you to hire him, or Leonardo to hire him as a solicitor. Yes. Now, that was in the morning, yes. Okay. And you asked him some basic questions, which is like, where is his oath? Uh, where is his qualifications? And I witnessed him shaking. Is that correct? Yes. And he started shaking. 
and he kept on shaking and he tried to convince you that he's there to help you. That's what I saw. Okay? I remember him saying that you have to first hire me and then I can give you the paperwork. But never did send you any paperwork because you never hired him. And I think he also said that he'll send it to you, irrespective, sometime in the evening, which you never received. Yes. Okay, so he will only give you paperwork if you hire him, is what I think he said. Yes. Okay. What happened afterwards? Afterwards, then, we waited in the hospital for something happened regarding that court. Mm -hmm. And it was about 8 o'clock, 8 p.m., when uh, uh, Stephanie Simpson, uh, so this is another social worker, uh, that, that was the first time that I met her, and she is with police around and security from the hospital. And um, we are, and we had a meeting with her. And um, it's when she then she says to me that uh, she has been in court and what has been decided was that they were going to take my baby away from me. And At this point. I already had left the hospital and was on my way to your home. Yes. Uh, you called me back, so I went back, and at this time, probably 15 to 20 minutes had passed. Okay? So if you can continue from there. So basically, she just asked that we were going to take your baby away, and uh, uh, they even I have used my own words against me. So in the afternoon, I kept saying, um, the, ju the, the, the doctor, I said that my baby was fit and well. So I said to everyone that could hear, if my baby is fit and well, please then let me go home. There is nothing, there is no reason why my baby is still kept in here. And they said that they were only waiting for the social service and they were only waiting for what the court was going to say. And so then Stephanie Simpson uh, said to us that if the baby was fit and well, so then it would have to be taken away from the hospital because the hospital would be the worst place to be um, with sick babies around and you could get sick just because of that. So they used your own words against you. Yeah. To saying you've now given us a reason to take the baby away from the hospital. Yes. So now I hear for the first time them saying that the baby... Um, was jaundice and dehydrated and had breastfeeding problems. And for this reason, the baby was being taken away from me. There was uh, concerns regarding what the father uh, does, and for that reason, they were taking my baby away. As I recall, they were exclusively taking the baby away because Leonardo's association with uh, sodium chloride that's what I saw on the document. I also saw there was no autographs on the documents, giving it any authority, uh, nothing of the sort. But they were all very happy that some sort of a judge has taken ownership of it. The piece of information that you mentioned, I recall, were just records saying that this is the history of the baby, that that they are not taking the baby away for that reason, but they're trying, they're trying to take the baby away because of what Leonardo does as a Genesis 2 church health minister helping people with health problems. That's what came across very clearly. Yeah. Yes. And then I witnessed later on four or five police officers that were uh, in, in the area, including two police officers in the, in the room that were completely estranged from you, um, the social worker coming in, cold-faced, <laughs> I remember that, and they were all very comfortable knowing what they're doing is what they should do, irrespective yeah. of any facts. I remember that quite clearly. Yes. And they were intimidating. They were also very polite at the same time but highly intimidating and dictatorial. And they took the baby away from you. And I also remember them saying, do you want to say goodbye to the baby? Yeah. And you, of course, 
being Portuguese, I heard that very clear. Yeah. said, of course I don't want to say goodbye to the baby, it's my baby. And they also took that as a prompt to take the baby away from you. And then they took it away and they marched you down the hall, ordered you to clear your room out and essentially kicked you out of the hospital and stole your baby from you. I witnessed all that myself. And that was the first time after that they gave the papers that we always wanted to see what was against us. And that was the first time that they gave these of papers. Case notes, they're not legal nothing, papers. Nothing but paperwork after paperwork that just simply records something and a lot of opinions that doesn't cause anybody to lose any baby is what I saw. Just points, like somebody recording points in time and then using that as a reason to take a baby away. Yeah, nothing incriminating, nothing evil, nothing bad. No, there was nothing there. Yeah. Nothing incriminating. My what baby. Leonardo does is nothing illegal, unlawful or anything else. And they know that. That's what I witnessed. Yeah. When I asked, when I calmed myself down and I realised that doesn't matter, Yolanda, does it, they are not bothered taking your baby. So when I wanted to say goodbye to my baby, they said, it's too late, they have taken him, they have taken him away already. And I was... If there was ever a, a un... What's the word I'm looking for? If I ever wanted to use the F off word without using it, that's what they did to you. Yeah. Witness that all the way through. Yeah. Yeah, witness that. Yeah. So after that, then, I, I only have been breathing. I have not been living. I have been breathing. And um, a few days passes and you visiting your baby now um, in some sort of a, a clinic where they bring the baby take the baby away again to the foster parents and that's going on. Yeah, Is that correct? So and, and also I think you guys are doing, you did a live life claim, which means that the baby is born alive and we're gonna, one of the things that the hospitals do is that they say that the child belongs to them and it's their property, their ward as they say. But luckily you guys did a, a live life claim, meaning that the baby is born alive fit and well, and you are the mother and father. Yes. Yeah. So you got that done. Yes. Yeah. And then, of course, you rang um, David Wynn Miller, or I should say full colon David hyphen Wynn full colon Miller, who's a chief federal judge. Yes. And we have a recording of the conversations that you've had and that, of course, is mind-blowing as to the information that is giving us and the level of help that is offering us. Yeah. I'm sorry to use the word us. It's you and the baby. Okay? Um, the reason why I use the word us is because I felt at this time I'm personally involved as well because I've known you uh, since Leonardo has met you and I've known Leonardo for close on to four years, I would say. Now. Yeah, but he is helping you now, isn't he? Yes, he's giving us counsel, if that's the right word. Yeah, helping I us. think that's the correct word. He's offering you counsel. Um, we will be asking for the oath of office of the solicitors, the barristers, the judge. We'll be asking for it in the correct sentence structure, passe syntax grammar. The, the very language or the very words that they use has been corrupted and it, there is many lies within the words. So the accusations that they accused you with, you're essentially saying you have the ability to disqualify that because you understand what the fraudulent conveyance of language is. Yes. And he's, he's performing a tutorial role, educational role, and you have to do that in a course as well. Yes. Yeah. And you're going to make this public. So that's what you said to me. You're going to make this public, and, it, and, it's, and it's going to be a public grievance, I think is what um, was echoed in my ears. Yes. Okay. 
and that every parliament member of parliament, every councillor, everybody that we can possibly think of <coughs> is going to know about this. Yes. And I think the judge said that he's also going to put it onto his website to let the whole world know what is happening to you guys. <laughs> and he used some astonishing figures. Apparently hundreds of thousands uh, of children go missing in this way and sold into uh, baby trafficking, child trafficking. Um, and part I'll slow my conversation down with this uh, because it's so shocking what he said.